This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is the second public information meeting for the local concept development study of the Great Road Bridge over Beedens Brook, located in Montgomery Township in Somerset County. Tonight is August 18th, and we are having this meeting, conducting it online from 6 to 8 p.m., and I'll read you the notice that we sent out and advertised in the paper. Somerset County, the North Jersey Transportation Planning Authority and the New Jersey Department of Transportation are hosting the second online public information meeting to inform and solicit input from local residents, officials, businesses, and the general public on the alternatives identified and evaluated to address the condition of County Bridge Number D0105 carrying Great Road, or CR601, over Beedens Brook. This meeting is being conducted in conformance with federal and state regulations. The public is invited and encouraged to comment on the study. This meeting is open to all members of the public. Written comments will be accepted via the Contact Us page, which is located on the project website, located at www.greatroadbridge.com, and we will accept written comments there through September 20th. And if there are additional questions regarding the project, we can always direct people to not only the project website, but our principal engineer, Lily and she will be available via email, and her information is on the project website as well. So my name is Nicole Pace Adeo. I am from Stokes Creative Group, and again, I wanna thank everybody for their time and participation tonight. Without further ado, I'm gonna turn things over to our presenter, Rick Menino from Dewberry. Thanks, Nicole. Um, as Nicole mentioned, we're here to, tonight to bring you up to speed essentially on what we have been doing as a project team um, regarding the evaluation of Gray Road Bridge since last we met uh, in March of 21. Um, since that time, we've continued to gather information. We've looked at various alternatives and evaluated those and have a recommendation which we're looking for your feedback on. Um, just to give you a heads up in addition to me, uh, as Nicole mentioned, she is with Stokes Creative Group, which uh, is our sub-consultant. I'm with Dewberry Engineers, and Nicole's firm was brought on to help us with public outreach, which she is obviously doing this evening and has done in the past. In addition to that, I'm joined by Lily Sue, who is with Somerset County's Engineering Division, um, as well as others from Rich. Right. Rich Brundage is from NJTPA, um, and we, while we do not have anyone on the call right now from NJDOT, they are also a partner in the study uh, that we have advanced. So with that said, let me get, as I mentioned, we are here tonight to bring you up to speed on what we have done, talk to you a little bit about the alternatives that we have developed and evaluated, and as I mentioned, solicit your input and your feedback and uh, answer any questions you may have on any of those alternatives so that we believe the, the project can be advanced forward and moved forward. So just to kind of fill everybody in again, um, we're talking about Somerset County's Great Road Bridge, D0105, which carries Great Road, which is County Route 601, as Nicole said, over Bedensbrook in Montgomery Township. So as you can see from this map that we're showing you here, it's located about halfway between Griggstown Franklin Turnpike to the north and Cherry Valley Road to the south. I, I won't spend a lot of time since this is our second meeting and, and most of you who live, who are involved with this know this area as well as we do. Um, but as you can tell from the, from the aerial map again, the west side of 601 or Gray Road is predominantly in this area dominated by a residential community associated with golf courses. Uh, whereas on the east side, um, it tends to be farm properties uh, and individual residents. 
So if, to just reorient you again, in this aerial view, we're looking Georgetown Franklin Turnpike is to the north, with Cherry Valley to the south. And to turn us and blow us blow this view up a little bit, now we're looking with uh, north being on your left in this aerial shot, and Cherry Valley to the south on the right. Um, the bridge, as you, as you can see, spans Beedens Brook and is immediately adjacent to the to the golf course as well as to the farm properties that abut the brook. The bridge itself was built in 1983, so it's just about just shy of 40 years old. Um, it's it's a two span structure, two simple spans. It comprised of a concrete deck, which is supported on steel beams, which span between con concrete abutments at either end and a center pier. Great Road itself is classified as an urban major collector. It's got a 45 mile per hour posted speed limit. And based on the pictures, you can tell we were in a, in a fairly tangent section of, of Great Road um, with fairly gradual rolling profile. Um, in addition to that, there are utilities that are supported on, on traditional aerial utilities on the west side. Uh, there's also a water main that runs beneath the brook on the same side as the area lines. And as we'll talk about, and as we mentioned in the in the earlier um, presentation, if you do recall, that Montgomery Township is in the process of looking into um, extending a force main, sanitary force main, that they will plan to run on the east side of Great Road, and which would also pass beneath the brook. Um, so as we're doing the study, we want to make sure that we accommodate the existing utilities as well as Montgomery Township's planned sanitary force main improvements. Since last we spoke, um, we did go out and had a subconsultant gather traffic data at the bridge site so that we would have actual traffic volumes uh, available to us to use into our, in our investigations. Um, Great Road carries, as it shows here, carries a 30-foot curb to curb with an 11 foot lane in each direction with four foot shoulders today. And there are no sidewalks, although um, one of the goals that we have for the project at the request of Montgomery Township was to accommodate at least one sidewalk on the bridge as part of the rehabilitation. This is just a quick snapshot of, of meetings that we have had and additional tasks, if you will, that we've completed since last we spoke. Um, probably the biggest one here is the evaluation of the various alternatives, which I'll try and highlight for you now. Just to reiterate a little bit though, um, you know, as I mentioned way back in our original meeting, the, the real purpose for the project is to arrest the structural degradation of the bridge. Um, as I mentioned, it was built in 1983. It's only about 40 years old, which is really a pretty early on in its life to be experienced degradation, um, which is prompted not only in 2008, the county went out and made a large rehabilitation for the bridge where the deck was, was reconstructed in essence. Um, so that in and of itself is about 25 years old. And subsequent to that, the county has continued to have to make maintenance repairs to the structure um, to ensure that it uh, does not continue to deteriorate and ultimately require either load posting or ultimate closure. So that's really why we're here. Um, the county had to make repairs in 2019. They don't want to have to continue to impact the public by making repairs to the structure and the role of this study is simply to to address how can that be rectified and bring the bridge back up to current standards so that um, the county does not have to have any concerns and the traveling public does not have to any have any concerns with this structure 
going forward. So as I mentioned, the, the purpose is just that, restore that structural integrity of the bridge. The needs are, are really um, the items that back up the purpose. And so the fact that the bridge is classified as structurally deficient, while that does not mean that there is a any concern of immediate possibilities of failure of the bridge, um, it does classify it as in, in need of attention and does allow it to be um, classified for funding availability through Federal Highway. And in essence, the county has applied through NJTPA to start the beginning of this process. Um, as we mentioned earlier on in our initial presentation that we are very early on in the project. Um, we're in the concept development stage. The intent of this is to is to look at various alternatives, present the preliminary preferred alternative to the public, garner support for that, um, and then hopefully graduate the project to the next phase, which would take it into its preliminary, then final design, and ultimately to construction. That duration of that process can take between now and could be four years from now. Um, at the earliest that the project would probably go to construction. And given the length of the time that it does take to get through the process, um, that's why the county is, is, has started at this time to study this and get this rectified so that a solution can be reached and the project can be advanced forward. So that's a little bit of the background just to reiterate from before. Um, Several goals, as I mentioned, were gathered and developed as we started to meet with the public and meet with adjacent residents and meet with Montgomery Township, um, not the least of which was to do all that we could to maintain traffic on Great Road while repairs or rehabilitation and or replacement of the bridge were uh, affected. Um, in addition, obviously, we wanted to make sure that we impact the environment as little as possible, um, try and minimize impacts to right of way, et cetera. As I mentioned, we also, one of the goals was to accommodate a future sidewalk along Great Road, as well as Montgomery Township's future sanitary main, and do this as expeditiously and as economically as possible. So those are the goals. Um, I'm going to spend a lot of time over the next few slides going over the the alternatives that were developed um, and how we tried to achieve that primary goal of minimizing impacts to traffic. But we start out basically at the beginning where we, as I had mentioned earlier, the existing bridge carries 11 foot lanes and four foot shoulders. Well, based on the classification of Great Road, and the traffic volume, the structure should carry six foot shoulders. So we develop a proposed section um, that we would use to evaluate how we would rehabilitate the structure to meet current standards. Um, so ideally, the shoulders should be widened nominally two more feet in each direction. The lane widths are, are fine, but in addition, as we mentioned, we want it to carry a six foot or a sidewalk um, at the request of Montgomery Township. The, the proposed section here is basically looking south um, in that we felt that introducing the sidewalk made more sense to be on the predominantly res residential side of Great Road in the fact that if in the future there was a demand, we felt that it would come from that residential side of the road to begin with. Um, it also, the section kind of fit better from an engineering standpoint with the current site conditions and the grading in the area, it was just easier to accommodate that sidewalk on the west side rather than the east side. So there was two reasons to put it on that side. So ideally the proposed section going forward, as it shows here, would we'd have a 34 foot curb to curb, two 11 foot lanes and two six foot shoulders. And we accommodate that six foot wide minimum sidewalk on the west side of the bridge. Um, we've also just shown, you know, standard four bar steel railing shown on the typical section here um, that just essentially mimics the current railing system that is there. 
Um, and this is a standard railing type that the DOT uses and the county uses. And I'm sure a lot of you have already seen this type of railing. So that's our desired section. Now we took that and, you know, we, we as I mentioned, we came up with alternatives with, again, the primary focus being, can we construct this desired section or how best could we construct this desired section while trying to maintain traffic, first and foremost? Uh, I'd, be, I'd be a little remiss if I didn't mention alternative one. We always look at no build as an option, um, even though we realize that no build does not address the purpose and need. Um, we still do identify it as, as an alternative. Um, and, and while we are talking about maintaining traffic under alternatives two, three, and four, which I'll present to you shortly, we also talk about alternative five, which while it does not maintain traffic on Great Road, um, it does have some advantages. And therefore, as part of this alternatives evaluation, we are not allowed to just simply disregard alternatives. So a, a detour has also been considered, but we evaluate the pros and cons of all of these. So let me get into them a little bit more. So I'm gonna, I'm, I, I'll, each of the slides going forward, I'll show you a, a plan view first um, of the alternative. So you may be able to get a sense of the overall footprint of the alternative in its final built condition. But the sections that I'll walk you through on the next slides um, probably give you a better understanding of what would actually happen and why we end up with um, the final section of that particular alternative. So as I mentioned, you know, we started out with a hierarchy of trying to achieve the goal for the project while maintaining traffic. Well, there's two lanes there today. So ideally, we'd love to be able to try and maintain two lanes during construction. So we started out with that premise. What can we do to stage work to maintain construction, excuse me, to maintain two lanes of traffic during construction? So the first alternative, entitled you know two two stage construction so we will maintain two lanes we're going to build the improvements under two stages um, so that we can maintain traffic during both stages and this requires that we overbuild the bridge to the west side of great road so you can get a little bit of a sense from the plan shown here that the the general if we start towards the right end of this view here, there's a light gray area. That's the existing width of pavement today. And as you can see, as we head north across, heading towards the bridge, that grows. Um, we do have a large band here of grass that shows up, which I'll explain as we get to the, to the staging. Um, it's just easier often to go through the stages. So let me show you those and then we'll work, we'll, we'll work back and forth through the, through the slides. So, as I mentioned, the goal of this alternative is to maintain both lanes of traffic during construction. So, in order to do that, as you can see, the top is the existing section. The section in the middle that we've called stage one construction, we simply slide traffic as far to the east as we can on the existing bridge so that we can remove a portion of it, so that we can then build as much of the as much of the new bridge as we can with while we try and stay within this right of way the green line the vertical green line shows where the existing right of way is on great road along the west side and on the opposite side you'll see here that this is the right of way on the east side that's available to us so if we encroach outside that right of way line with the proposed construction we then need to acquire property from the adjacent owner so ideally we'd like to be within these two green lines when we build. But at the same time here, we said we wanna maintain two lanes of traffic. So under the first stage, we have to build enough new structure so that we can subsequently accommodate two lanes in the second stage. So as you can see here in the first stage, we shift traffic on the existing bridge as far to the northbound or east side as we can, remove a portion of it, and then build enough new bridge deck, if you will, to then in the subsequent second stage, accommodate those two lanes of traffic. So first stage, we build portion of the new bridge, 
Second stage, we would move traffic to that newly constructed section. That then allows us to go back and remove the remainder of the original bridge, construct the balance of the new structure, and so that we end up, when it's all said and done, with our complete section. Now, it's rather obvious here that by doing this overbuild in these in this first stage in order to accommodate two lanes, we end up with a significantly wider structure than is necessary. Okay. So while this does look absurd, this gives you a sense for how much wider that structure would have to be. Okay. Obviously, the disadvantages to that are that by having to overbuild to maintain two lanes, that significantly increases not only the footprint of the project along Great Road, but also obviously the width of the improvements. As I mentioned, it also requires that we would purchase right of way. We impact all the aerial utilities along that west side that are supported on the, the aerial poles. Plus we would impact the water main that is below the stream at that location. By overbuilding the bridge, we obviously impact the greatest portion of the adjacent environmental um, environmentally sensitive lands adjacent to Bedensbrook itself. By building more, we obviously have a longer construction duration. We have more to build. It's going to take us longer to build it. And by building a significantly wider structure than we need, clearly we've got greater, great construction project costs. So while it does offer the advantage of maintaining two lanes of traffic, it results in significant disadvantages. So we, as we start to work our way through these alternatives, our goal is to try and minimize some of these disadvantages and grow some of the advantages. So in, the, in alternative three shown here, we said, okay, what if we had to go to three stages of construction to maintain those two lanes? So I'm gonna just jump to the stages, the construction stages on the next slide. Under this scenario, again, we do the same thing. We shift the traffic on the existing bridge as far east as we can, and we build a portion of the new structure. But we realize that under this scenario, we will only need to maintain one lane of traffic in the subsequent stage. So we are able to build this first portion of the new structure within the existing right of way. When we shift stages, we are then allowed to keep one lane northbound on the existing bridge, remove more of the existing structure, transfer the traffic that used to be on the existing bridge in the original stage to the newly constructed portion that we have to the west, which will allow southbound traffic to travel there. That allows us to build more of the new superstructure in this second stage. But it does require that the contractor, as you can imagine, is now working in this zone in between traffic. Okay. But once we have built this partial portion of the center of the new bridge, we are able to then transfer northbound traffic to it, remove the remainder of the original bridge, and construct the remainder of the new superstructure. Okay. So, what this does is this allows us to narrow our overall footprint of the project. You still can see where the shoulder width is, is greater than the desired six foot shoulder that we need. We've got double that. Um, and again, we end up with a greater area of sidewalk than, than really needed, but we have reduced our footprint such that we fall within the existing right of way. So that does add a benefit. Okay. So again, the advantages have grown on under alternative three and the disadvantages have reduced, which is what we're trying to achieve. So again, this maintains two lanes of traffic, reduces that project limit, therefore reduces our environmental impact, our right-of-way impacts, our utility impacts, our construction costs. But again, it, we are overbuilding, so we wind up with more structure than we truly need. We still impact some of the utilities. As I mentioned, we've got a center construction zone which reduces safety um, for everyone involved. The contract is in the middle of traffic that way. 
um, you're asking traffic to diverge and then re-enter um, the roadway, if you will, the normal alignment. And we still end up with fairly lengthy construction duration because while we have a smaller footprint, we do now have three stages to build. So every time we build in stages, we've got to ask the contractor to shift and move traffic, slows things down. So now we go to the other extreme, if you will. Can, can we maintain traffic via one lane, but alternate that traffic? And under this scenario, you know, the setting of the bridge becomes very important. We're on a tangent section, as I mentioned, of Great Road. Therefore, visibility is very good. So there's less concern with if there was a curved alignment of, of motorists seeing oncoming traffic. So under this scenario, what happens is we would end up building the work by installing temporary signals, one temporary signal on the north end of the project and one temporary signal on the south end of the project. And then we alternate traffic through the construction zone. So I'll show you a simulation in a minute, but let me just walk you through the staging that, that this would entail. Again, we always start out with our existing conditions. In this case, we only need to maintain one lane of traffic. So again, we can remove a majority of the existing bridge, which again allows us to pull our new portion of construction as close as we can to the existing so we can minimize our footprint, get as, get almost to that, get to that desired section that we want. Under this scenario, we do have a traffic signal at either end of the job. So right now this is showing traffic in stage one section, shows traffic headed southbound. While this, while these motorists going southbound are, are traveling in this lane, northbound traffic is held up by a temporary signal at the south end of the job. Once that signal reverts, traffic can then operate in the opposite direction. So we're alternating traffic using this single lane. That allows us to minimize our footprint dramatically. Similarly, we can now go in once we have built enough of the new structure to accommodate a single lane, we can then shift traffic to this newly constructed lane and repeat it in that we would have traffic in this lane controlled by the temporary signals. So again, southbound traffic would move through, then it would be time for northbound traffic to use that lane. So we would alternate traffic through the available lane in the various stages, but this allows us to then utilize a single lane of traffic to maintain both directions of traffic, both northbound and southbound, and construct our bridge in two stages. So we actually end up, under this scenario, we end up with our desired section. Six foot shoulder widths when it's all said and done, the 11 foot lanes that we want, as well as accommodating the six foot sidewalk because the, the sidewalk, the desire to incorporate a sidewalk actually helps because it allows us to build enough structure in the first stage to put one lane of traffic here. And then in the last stage, as the note says here, we would, while traffic is here, we would construct the rest of the sidewalk area here, um, especially given the fact that there are no pedestrians using the bridge today. This works well, obviously. So as I mentioned, I'll show you a simulation. This gives you a sense for how traffic would flow through the construction zone. And hopefully it will start. Hmm. That's not good. Oh, I apologize for this not working right now. Um, but in essence, I'll walk you through it, which is basically what I showed in the sections, and I'll see if I can't get this to work while we're answering any questions later. But in essence, there would be a temporary signal located north of Inverness, which would control traffic here. And there would be a temporary signal north of the structure, which is here at Bensbrook, which would control traffic 
monitor traffic through the construction zone on the north end of the construction zone. And while traffic is stopped headed northbound at this light, traffic headed southbound would be able to flow across the bridge and maintain, be maintained on Great Road. Then traffic would be stopped on the north end and traffic would cycle through from the south. Um, the timing based on the, the traffic analysis that we have done shows that we will not back up traffic past Inverness Court, excuse me, Inverness Drive, which was a concern because we did not want it to affect traffic of folks who live off of Inverness and coming out of the residential community. So I apologize again for, for whatever reason, this does not seem to want to work very right now. No, sorry. So I apologize. I'll see if I can't get that started shortly and we can show it later. Um, but again, as I mentioned, the intent is to try and get a significant number of advantages and as few disadvantages as possible in these alternatives. And as you can tell here, Alternative four provides many advantages. Not only does it allow us to maintain vehicular traffic, it allows us to furnish that desired bridge section, which then minimizes the work on the roadway, minimizes our environmental impact and right-of-way acquisitions, reduces utility impacts, and therefore by, by building as the desired section that we need to satisfy the design criteria, reduces our construction costs and shortens our construction duration. Okay, the one disadvantage is obviously that we are alternating traffic. So traffic does have to wait at the traffic signal while the construction zone clears. Um, that in the simulation takes about 45 seconds, which is fairly reasonable. It's just like sitting most likely at a normal traffic signal. So it is, it's a very viable, safe alternative. As I mentioned, the fifth and final alternative that we looked at was closing the road completely, detouring traffic around the bridge site, and building the desired section. So as shown here, the, the detour that would be anticipated under this scenario would be to use Cherry Valley Road to divert traffic out to 206, 206 back to Georgetown Franklin Turnpike, and obviously for southbound traffic, they would do just the opposite turn left onto Georgetown Franklin Turnpike, run out to 206 and back to Cherry Valley to come back to Great Road. That detour length is about six miles. Okay. Now we all realize that that you know detours are not desirable um, in today's day and age, unfortunately. Um, you know, all too often we sign a detour and everybody has ways, everyone has the GPS in their phone, and it'll often tell them to avoid detour routes, you can use local roads. And so um, as much as we may want to detour traffic, people and motorists will find another way or no local roads. And so you often end up with, with traffic on roads under detour scenarios that that is not intended to be there. Be that as it may, you know, the detour alternative also has significant advantages. It lets us build that desired section. You know, it eliminates traffic in the construction zone. So therefore it improves safety again for the motorists as well as the contractor. Minimizes the project footprint. It's the same as, as alternative four, where we've got the narrowest footprint that we want. Therefore we wind up with minimal env environmental or minimized environmental impacts, minimized right of way impacts, utilities, this would alternative will end up with the shortest construction duration because there is no staging whatsoever. It's just a single stage, close the road, contract has complete control of the project site, and then therefore should be able to build it as expeditiously as possible. The primary disadvantage is obviously that the bridge is closed for its for the duration of construction. So once we've developed these various alternatives and the disadvantages and advantages, we use a, an alternatives matrix analysis to, to basically evaluate those or document those pros and cons of, of the alternatives um, and kind of guide us, if you will, 
to make sure that almost like a, a master checklist to make sure that not only have we satisfied the goals for the project, the purpose and need for the project, but but have we kind of looked at all of the various elements or, or constraints or criteria that we wanted to make sure we did to evaluate the alternatives. So you'll see in the matrix, we have our criteria across the top here, where obviously the first one being, does the alternatives satisfy the purpose of the project? Now, will it restore the structural integrity of the bridge to current standards? So clearly alternative one for no build does not, but any of the build alternatives, obviously those all satisfy the purpose and need. And then we move from there to, you know, does it maintain traffic? Does it, you know, minimize construction duration? Are the permit demands significantly greater on one of the alternatives versus others? What are the construction costs? What are the right-of-way impacts? And we weigh all of these factors and look at all those advantages and disadvantages that we just went through and come up with our recommendation. Um, and based on, as I mentioned, the advantages documented and, and exhibited and offered through alternative four, this is the alternative that we are proposing and soliciting your input from. We'd like to hear from you on, on any questions or concerns you may have with any of the alternatives. Um, but we have, you know, as a team have, have recommended to the county that, you know, going with alternative four, using the alternating traffic truly achieves the goals for the project while satisfying that purpose and need um, in that it's construction duration. And, and one of the things I want to point out is while this shows an overall construction duration of nine to 12 months, that doesn't mean that traffic will be impacted on Gray Road for nine to 12 months. These are, these are construction durations that are associated when the contract would be signed by a contractor by the county and when the contract is fully complete, you know, the area is cleaned up, et cetera. So, you know, there, this is intended to just give you a sense for the overall duration of that construction time frame, going from, as I mentioned, the alter, the various alternatives to give you a sense for that. Um, Cost-wise, although alternative four is not the lowest cost detour would be, um, it is again does satisfy the goal because we wanted to economically conduct the repairs while balancing that goal of achieving maintaining traffic. So it does all of those. Um, and that's why we're, we're, our recommendation is to go with alternative four. Uh, but again, we're here to listen to you tonight and get your feedback. So just to, as I mentioned, to tell you where we've come from, from early on with meeting with Montgomery Township, um, then meeting with adjacent property owners, and stakeholders as we've called them or identified them to our first meeting in March with the general public and then kind of repeating that process if you will with going through the basically the same presentation I've just presented regarding what we developed in the way of alternatives and our logic for a recommendation uh, has brought us to where we are tonight um, and again we're here to answer questions get your feedback on this so that with the hopes that the project can graduate, can move forward um, with support from the public. And then once we do have achieved that, we would go to both Montgomery Township and Somerset County seeking resolutions of support for the project from them as well. Um, and then we would conclude by doc fully documenting all aspects of our study in a report, which then is a reviewed and approved by NJTPA uh, as well as NJDOT and Federal Highway. Um, and if there is buy-in, then the study phase is complete and the project will hopefully graduate to the next phases of its life um, and ultimately through design and into construction um, so that the county can put this structure behind its, um, on its good list, if you will, and know that they don't have to worry about it anymore. So. I apologize again for that simulation not working. I don't know why it did not work. I will see if I can play with it while um, we may answer any questions for you in the meantime. So with that, I'm gonna give it back to Nicole and see if she can pass along any questions you may have or, or comments. Thank you. Great, 
Thank you so much, Rick. And while Rick is uh, getting that video, see if he can get that video played. Um, what you see on the screen here is the contact information for myself. I'm Nicole, as I mentioned, and Lily's contact information is above. The best way to reach us is via email. Again, those email addresses are on the screen. And we ask everyone who has written comments or questions to please send them to us via email or once again on the project website, which is listed at the bottom of the screen. It's greatroadbridge.com. And I do believe there is a link there from the Montgomery Township website. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the Q&A portion of the meeting and that will end our formal presentation. So during Q&A, what we ask everyone to do, as I mentioned earlier, is to please use use the chat box. That feature is located at the upper right-hand corner of the screen. I put a little message in there for everyone so you can see it to type your questions in. And if anyone would like to speak with the project team regarding comments or questions, again, just type into the chat box and say, I have a question, unmute me, and I will call on you to speak with our team. So we'll just wait until we have a couple of questions. And again, this meeting will be going on now through 8 p.m. So we'll be, we'll be here. And the floor is now open. Once again, if you'd like to um, ask a question another way, you can do it. If, if you don't want to type into the chat box, you can turn your camera on and just kind of wave to me and I will call on you. But otherwise, that's how we're going to conduct Q&A. Nicole, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can try and open the file, see if I can't get the simulation to work, then I'll come back on. Okay, sounds good. Okay. While we're, while we're waiting for Rick to get the video loaded of the detour information or simulation, we would ask everybody to please share this video with everyone that you think would be interested in the project. This is again a public meeting and just because we're conducting it tonight does not mean that it ends tonight. The comment period for this meeting will go through September 20th. And we're gonna ask our friends at Montgomery Township to please post it on social media and share it out there with everyone. I will email this link once we have it up on the website. I'll get this shared to everyone who is on our stakeholder list and our public list as well.
There we go. Rick, you should be able to now unmute yourself and there you go. Go ahead. So let's see if this works. <laughs> okay, that's a little better. Yep. Let me, I'll let it cycle through to the end and then we'll just restart it from the beginning. Just to let everybody know, this is sped up about four times faster than what would happen in, in real life, if you will. But you can see how traffic is flowing southbound while, while cars are waiting in the northbound direction. Again, one of the concerns we wanted to make sure that based on the traffic volumes and traffic patterns that we had, that these vehicles waiting in the northbound direction did not queue up and cause traffic problems for people who may want to exit or get into the queue to go northbound from Inverness or to certainly go southbound. Like I said, the, the typical wait under this scenario is about 45 seconds, but this is obviously sped up faster so that we all don't have to simply wait here for 45 seconds while the model, while the simulation runs. Um, one of the things that we had mentioned earlier in earlier discussions is that the timing of the signals can be adjusted so that as the project moves forward into the design phase and, and ultimately to construction, the timing of the signals can be verified or right at the time of construction and even during construction, if for whatever reason it's determined that you know traffic is backing up further than anticipated, if you will, on the north side or on the south side, traffic can be adjusted, that, that signals can be adjusted real time to allow traffic to flow more freely in one direction as opposed to the other. So that that's there. Um, the traffic signals are also actuated so that if it's not the peak time, um, if you're out traveling on the road and I'll make up a time, it's nine o'clock at night, um, and there, are, you know, you're the sole car headed northbound. You would not have to wait. The traffic signals will be actuated based on the traffic volume. And therefore, if there are no traffic, no traffic coming southbound, you will be able to pass through the construction zone. So it does have a lot of flexibility. Um, the county's using this now, this the uh, system now. Um, and it's being used by, by several counties and the state as well to accommodate traffic through these tight construction zones um, and to minimize detours because everybody prefers to stay on the local road that they're on and used to taking if at all possible. I'm going to mute myself because there's con some construction going on and I think you're hearing that in the background. So I apologize for that. Okay, great. And we will just leave the questions slide up with the contact information. And once again, if anyone would like to verbally or non-verbally ask questions or type in comments to the chat box, those are welcomed at this time. Talking to myself, I'm muted. I was gonna say, I could add one more thing regarding the traffic simulation. We did take traffic counts in April of this year. So April 21, and in order to evaluate the simulation, what we did was we grew that those volumes out 
based on an anticipated construction year. So they have been escalated, if you will, or, or grown to account for potential growth in traffic volumes over the years. So they've been graduate, they've been escalated about four years, if I remember correctly, so that they do accommodate growth in traffic. Nicole, is there a, I see a, like a one next to a, the chat. Is Did someone submit something or am I just misinterpreting that? Uh, it's probably just uh, the message that, that I put in there. Yeah, uh, I typed in the uh, note to everyone that they can ask questions during the Q&A. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just continue. I guess the other thing I could point out from a traffic standpoint, um, the all the staging options that we looked at accommodate all vehicles. So there's no need to detour truck in in this instance, which a lot of people have concern about trucks. Um, so all the lanes would be sufficient in width, including the the single lane as we alternate traffic through there to accommodate. Um, trucks, you know, EMS, fire, um, school buses. So there is no concern with any one vehicle type having to be detoured at all. Once again, the project team and, and Rick especially is looking forward to any feedback and or questions regarding tonight's presentation. So now is the time to do so while you have us live and available to answer these questions in real time. And once again, if you're not interested in providing comments or questions at this particular moment, or maybe something comes up after you watch the video again, by all means, utilize the website, greatroadbridge.com. There you'll find the contact form, and that's where you can type in any of your comments or questions regarding this presentation. And once again, the comment period will be through September 20th. We do have a comment and uh, of one of appreciation that says, glad to hear the timing of the signals can be adjusted for high and low volumes. It would be good to not have to wait when you are the only one on the road. Thanks for the presentation and glad the link will be on the Montgomery Township website. Thank you for that comment. Yes, and I'm thankful that the simulation worked. Another comment in says, I have seen the alternating traffic signals on Amwell Road on the way to Somerset. They are a good invention. Thank you for that comment as well.
Once again, if you'd like to ask questions or comments, now is the time to do so using the chat box. Or again, if you turn your unmute your microphone or turn your video on and just wave, I can call on you at this time. But if there are no further questions or comments, we will stay muted. Okay, Rick, I've got a question for you. And I know we didn't have the duration in this presentation, but the question is, I realize the total project will take some time. Do you have an estimated start date as of yet? I'm sorry, Nicole, I was, I was muted. Um, no, <laughs> That's okay. No, we, we, at this point, there is not a, a well, I guess in essence, the project has started. The life of the project has started. Um, at what point the project would start its next phase would be preliminary design. Um, and our goal right now, or our responsibility right now, is to deliver our our completed report and hopefully have the project graduate by the end of this year. At that point the county would um, prepare another request for a proposal um, and solicit consultants to advance the project through its, its initial or its preliminary design and final design phases. Um, after vetting that scope with NJTPA and DOT, I believe. So the earliest design and Lily may want to may be able to add some information but we're probably looking at that time frame could be as as long as a year um, depending on funding sources for the next phase uh, so then design for preliminary and final design could take another year um, that's why we move the anticipated construction start date out at least four years um, because there's, there are competitions for funds for the projects. Um, so you have to get the project into the pipeline to get the ball rolling, if you will, and get the get the the process started so that you become available for for available funds. If so, I can chime in. Go right ahead. Uh, I, I think it's more realistically, uh, the construction will probably not start uh, five to six years from now. And once again, this presentation is going to be loaded into the project website, which is greatroadbridge.com. You will be able to visit the project website and view this video right there in the site. 
and we will be distributing that link to everyone who is in our stakeholder database and members of the public who received the notification so that they can sh share it with others and view it and again submit their comments and questions to us through September 20th. And once again, we will stay muted until there are additional comments or questions. And if none appear, we will be very quiet.
The time is officially 8 p.m. and that concludes tonight's online public information meeting for the Great Road Bridge Project. Once again, we'd like to thank everyone for participating in our meeting and please visit the project website at greatroadbridge.com where you'll be able to watch the video and also provide feedback via the comment form now through September 20th. Any final thoughts, Rick? Any final words? No, I think you covered it all, Nicole. Thank you. Great, and thank you as well. So on behalf of the project team, I'd like to say thank you again for view viewing our video and have a great evening. Good night. Good night.